Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's album review. Brett doesn't know what we're going to be uh, reviewing, even though I've told him, doesn't believe me. <laughs> so we're going to be, uh, <laughs> just say, we are going to be reviewing um, Justin Trouser Snake, sorry, Justin Timberlake. Um, oh, shut sure. up, shock. <laughs> See, I wasn't, I wasn't joking, I'm serious. Right. Um, this album. 2020 experience, I think it's called. So let's have a look at the comment. This is from Drum Master. Um, so they also suggest reviewing the 2020 experience part one by Justin Timberlake. This was Timberlake's first album in seven years since his latest album in 2006. During that, he put his music career on hiatus to focus, to focus more on acting, even though this is where it gets interesting, even though it's 10 tracks, the album is 70 minutes long, with most tracks being in the seven to eight minute range. It's also a part two, if you want to review that. So um, let's just get it all up there on the screen. So I have had a quick look at this. Um, and the drum master is not joking. Um, the tracks here, just quickly go to it, are all long, every single one. <laughs> um, so, that, yeah, 10 tracks, 70 minutes long. Um, Mirrors Rings a Bell, the name of it. So I may possibly know that one, but if I do, it's certainly not going to be surely an eight-minute long song. The radio edit must have been shorter. Um Anything there you recognise? Yeah, like you, I recognise mirror, uh, mirrors, but again, like you, yeah, not the how long minutes um, that was there. And also Suit and Tie um, as well is probably the only other one, I think, I'm going to quick look down, um, that I recognise. Yeah, I don't recognise Suit and Tie, but that is one of the three released tracks. I think I did see that somewhere. Um, here, suit and tie, mirrors, and tunnel vision. Were tunnel vision kind of rings a bell as well, so I may possibly know that. But until I start listening, I'm not going to know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is. Oh, hang on, get that out of the way. Um, so, yeah, this is the the album we're going to be listening to. Um, its lead single is Suit and Tie. So I'm looking forward to that. I probably know, surely I know it. I must know it. Uh, I'd be surprised if I didn't. Um, so nominated for a Grammy Award, best pop vocal album. Well, that's good stuff. Um, right, look, read all this, go on for too long. Um, are you a fan of Mr. Timberlake? <sighs> Not, not a fan of Justin Timberlake. Um, I think it's one of those is probably, uh, I don't know, it's a hard, like, I don't know, I've got nothing against Justin Timberlake. I think a lot of the songs I have heard of his, I do generally like. Um, I probably would know more of his early naughty stuff where he just became, just come out of NSYNC and doing his single stuff. I think that was just, just for the era, really. Um, but I think I probably would be more interested in more of his newer, well, this is not even newer, this is still quite old, uh, <laughs> this later stuff of Justin Tim Blake comparison to his um, earlier stuff, maybe. Um, maybe it's a bit, a bit, a bit more mature, potentially. But um, no, I'm looking forward to, to listening to this one, actually. Yeah, you're looking forward to the, well, what do you think of the idea of the, well, the fact that the songs are so long? <sighs> yeah. <sighs> I don't know yet. I said it, it can go either way, can't it? I think if there's a lot going on and it doesn't feel like a long song, then it makes no difference. Um, yeah, I think it, it really just going to depend on, on the song, type of song and what song's sort of playing now. I do get the feeling I could probably see myself future Brett saying a bit repetitive, some of the songs <laughs> maybe. And, it was good, but maybe just went on that little bit too long for Robin. But I'm saying, until it happens, until it happens. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to it. Um, I think 
I don't want to say Justin Blake is my cup of tea, but more, how can I say it? That kind of genre of music maybe is a bit more up my street. Um, so, yeah, I am looking forward to it. I don't think I'm going to dislike this. It's more just a case of how much am I going to like it, if that makes sense. That's what mm. I'm thinking. Um, so we'll, we're going to go off and listen to it, and we'll be back with you guys in just a second. So we've now listened to the album, um, 2020 Experience, part one, by Justin Timberlake. So as we, as we usually do, go over to Brett. We'll go over to Brett for his um, opinion on the album. Okay. Anyway. I'll do my best. So I remember, I know it was a while back when we did this sort of introduction to, to this, and I think one of the key questions you probably asked me was, when we looked at the track listings, are you worried and concerned about the length of some of the songs? Because there were some of them were quite quite long. And I think my response was very diplomatic. No, it doesn't put me off. I think it depends on the song. Um, you know, if it's a good song, then track length probably shouldn't matter too much. However, <laughs> for this album, for all the positive probably were there, the, 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 the elephant in the room was a lot of these tracks for me personally were just too long. I think there was too many too long tracks and it it kind of ruined it for me um, in that regard, which is, again, like I said, a bit harsh from what we were saying there. I do feel there's definitely a lot of positives um, from the album. Um, there's definitely a sense of... Um, I ended up actually listening to this album in two parts because I was listening... As I was starting listening to it, I was like... I don't think I can do this all in one go. I think I need to step away, which is unusual for, you know, like a, a pop pop album to, to do that. So I ended up listening to parts and whether I did, whether that changed my opinion on, whether I definitely felt the sort of second half of the album was better than the first part. But I said maybe because I'd stepped away and came back into it. Um, and I said for all the positive I might end up going through, the, 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 like I said, the elephant in the room was that for a lot of them and, Shame my notes aren't that great. Is that if it stopped, you know, halfway through or three quarters, it'd probably be a really good enjoyable song to get through, but just went on that little bit um, too long. And I said, whether that ended up being in my head more and played in more, I don't know. Um, but that for me was just the biggest sort of negative that I'm really harping on about, really. But I said, well, that means we go through tracks, so we might be able to delve in a bit more into some of the songs okay um so for me i remember in my intro in my introduction i could kind of big up jt a little bit kind of saying um i, remember, I think i said something along the lines of it's it's a kind of more a case of how much am i going to like the album like I'm, i think i'm going to like it but just how much now, i don't know why i said that i i, I kind of over <laughs> over hyped justin timberlake because i'll be honest I've never liked his music. <laughs> so I don't know why I kind of got so excited when I, when I saw the, you know, the, during the introduction. Um, I don't know what came over me. Because I knew I, I, I didn't particularly like his songs that he's, he's, he's never done. Um, so it was a bit weird. I don't know what I was thinking at the time. Um, so, what I've noticed I've got here. So I've always kind of got confused with Timberlake and Timberland. Okay. <laughs> Similar sounding names. And not only that, they were kind of very popular at the same period, at the same time, like kind of like the early, well, like in the noughties, mm. uh, like the first decade. And um, but also what's interesting, Timberlake, uh, no, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> sorry, I get confused. Timberland produces Timberlake's music as well. So he's involved in it. Um, and the issue for me with this album, and you were focusing a lot on the uh, the length of the of the songs, which I'm not really going to I'm not really going to touch on that during this introduction, uh, during this review at the moment. Obviously, we'll talk about that as we go for each song. I just felt that, that the songs weren't; it wasn't really kind of catchy chorus type music, generally. 
I think we probably overused the word, but I would say it felt quite artistic. I felt like JT was trying to be really cool and smooth. Now, whether he did come off as that, that's uh, debatable. And yeah, the songs weren't really catchy. Overall, a disappointing album, but it was a butt hit. I am a fan of one song, which will go onto my playlist, which we'll talk about when we get to it. Um, so, yeah, that's all I've got to say on that. On that. Um, so let's go through the songs. First one was Push a Love Girl. So sounded like at the beginning, kind of like a, like a very old movie with the sounds. And then we suddenly heard JT started singing and has that very kind of squeaky voice of his that I don't particularly like. Um, I just didn't like the song. Just quite a lot of voices all at once, an awful chorus. Then it was a complete cha change up, which did happen during this album because the songs were so long. And then this, the kind of the rap part at the end makes the song a bit better. But overall, for me, it was a very disappointing song. Um, yeah, I've said this um, a few times with albums we've done, but I find this first song sums up the album, or at least it's definitely sort of the first half of the album. I've said before, but I think this first half is quite similar. They are different, there's variation, but I think in the grand scheme of things, very similar and lots of, very repetitive in, in some regards. Um, for such a lot of time, I know it changes up and like, we did have a little rap bit here. And this is kind of what I've said for a lot of the songs, even though there are these influence there for the length of the song it is, it feels like a lot happens, but at the same time, a lot doesn't happen as well. Maybe it's because it hasn't got, as you say, you know, like a cliche, pop, catchy chorus. It's just one long um, sort of song. Um, in a way. I think when you said in the intro as well about the artistic kind of things as well. Um, and I would sort of add that, I was probably didn't say in my intro, but I Justin Blake. I don't mind a lot of songs. I think what I've always liked with Justin Blake is that he does do various different types um, of songs. Um, but um, yeah, with this, like I said, it's just a bit bit boring is what i'm trying to do a long version i'm trying to say yeah just a, a little bit boring nice little just um, it's like i think yeah trying to be cool and i think it's yeah it's, it was just for me this first one just a bit boring i said for the first one for a long song and i think that like i said it kind of stuck for the for the rest all the way through really so next up we had suit and tie featuring jay-z um yeah, so it began with distorted, weird voices, like sort of computer style voices. That was just the intro. Uh, and then I rec started to recognize the song. Haven't heard this one for a long time. I've never especially or particularly liked it, but it's okay. And then eventually Jay-Z did get involved after, after three minutes, but the song just didn't make a great impression on me. Um, just didn't. I was actually, you know what? I was kind of struggling for notes on most of these songs. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't have anything more to say on it. Just didn't particularly like it. Yeah, it's the same with me. Like, and this is what I kind of mean where you know, they're long songs. It does a lot sort of kind of happening. I was there are different bits. Like I said, we've got Jay Z in this particular one rapping, but at the same time, it, <laughs> there's not a lot to also say. At the same time, which seems really contradictory to, to say, really. Um, as I said before, I, said, I did know the song, did like the song. This is actually one of the shorter ones at five minutes long, but it still felt it, did, it didn't need to be as long as it was, I think. And the other common theme with a lot of these songs is that you generally, it doesn't have so much like a catchy chorus, but it might, like Justin, it will sort of repeat the title of the song or a particular line of the song and repeat that over and over again in different and ways. We'll, different we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, okay. There is one the better one that. But, <laughs> but the point is I'm saying that because again, the lovely songs kind of have then changing the voice. And, um, and I think again, if you're in the right place at the right time to be listening to stuff, it's probably okay. And that's probably what's going to be part of my sum up to the end. Um, but like I say, it, it's actually an all right song. 
but still on the album, the longer version of it, just, uh, it was just, that, that's a little bit too long. And we had Don't Hold the Wall. So some strange noises in the background. Kind of said it sounds a bit like a zoo. I don't think it was trying to be a zoo, but it just had that kind of, that was the first thing that came to my head. Trying to be cool, trying to be a cool, chilled out song, but not really sure it is though. Big question marks over that. Then there was a change up. Um, I just put here so much similarity to Timberland with this particular song. I quite like this, this funky parts that came on nearer the end. So overall, not bad, this one. Um, didn't mind this one. And I would just say, I actually like Timberland. I, I like, I look at some of his titles, some of his, of his songs that he's done, usually collaborates with other people. And Timberland I quite like, but yeah, with Timberlake, struggles to find songs of his that I like, but that's just a, an added extra I thought I'd throw in there. Yeah, Actually, I forgot to comment on that sort of things that he said there as well. So it's funny with you, the Timberland and Timberlake kind of thing. And I knew they had collaborated together. I knew there was sort of a link. And actually, for me personally, it's my theme, probably seven minutes long, this one here. Um, I put the intro style, it was a bit unusual, but I've put here sort of, a guy you know I quite like Tyler the Creator where it has that sort of creative style I think it's sort of what you were saying in terms of trying to be cool and I think you know being biased to Tyler the Creator I think he does it cool um, yeah. yeah sorry we had a connection <laughs> issue there I lost my connection um, sorry you're saying I think it's still recording though you said Tyler the Creator okay. um can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Well, now I can. So, sorry, yes. You, yeah, so you were saying that Tyler Creator does it better. Um, yeah, in terms of, I think you were saying, you know, sort of the intro bit where I was trying to, you know, play sounds and stuff and trying to be cool. Um, Tyler Creator reminds me of Tyler Creator. I just thought he did it sort of better um, from there. I just found this particular song sort of a bit repetitive. Again, I know it changed up. We had a bit of sort of dance music. Um, and like some of the other songs, yeah, I know we've got the zoo, so I've put jungle sounds rather than zoo sound, mm -hmm. same sort of thing. Um, again, like I said, there's lots of these things going on, but at the same time, it's also like not a lot sort of going on at the same time. I feel like, again, it's probably going for the rest of the songs, not the ideal album to probably critically listen to and try and break down. I think you kind of need to listen, just enjoy it in the right sort of atmosphere from there. But um, yeah, not bad, but still too much, too long. Move on to the next track. Next track was Strawberry Bubblegum. Had a nice smooth start. Um, quite like the beat going on. I just found this one though really uh, tough to um, describe. Um, then there was kind of some real funky music happening. Not really sure the last bit of the song was needed, so I think it dragged on a little bit too long. Um, but the last bit did make it very different to the rest of the song. Yeah, so I agree with that one there. I think um, I've also put like a Jay-Z sort of feel towards the end there, but also there was a bit where sort of gain is just different sounds of the tune, talking a lot about you know, being a blueberry lollipop over and over again. Okay, again, this track, I think it was almost nine minutes long. Um, and again, lots of stuff going on, but at the same time, not <laughs> enough in terms of, I know I feel like I'm repeating myself, but that is generally how I was sort of feeling. At this point, I was thinking, you know, I think I might need to come away from the album and come back and listen to the rest of it. I just put here about the intro. I've got sort of a Barry White kind of intro feel. And it, did, it was a nice sort of mellow, mellow style. I like Again, with a lot of these tracks, I think if they were shorter or split into two different songs, I probably would enjoy that a little bit more. And like I said, maybe it's just going to my head and I feel like I'm going on it about it a lot, but it's just sort of how I felt um, with that there. Yeah, too much similar to the, the previous tracks. Okay, so next up we had Tunnel Vision. 
And I put here, I think I can hear Timberlake, not Timberland, Timberlake in the background. It feels quite a dreary song. I don't mind the smooth, the smooth singing by JT in this, in this particular song, but I just thought the rest of the song was a bit meh, just a bit, a bit of a nothing song. The song sounds vaguely familiar, so I may know the radio edit of this. I'm not, not, not entirely sure. If I, do, if I do know it, then I don't know it very well. Um, yeah, so this was, again, a seven-minute track. This was a released track. Um, I didn't recognise it, so maybe why I recognised it well, because I said it, it was one that was um, released. Again, I found it, again, quite similar to the other ones, where, again, it's just sort of tied to repeating. Uh, I think you said it best there. It was just a bit meh. I have put sort of similarities to Michael Jackson. With Justin Timberlake's always kind of been... Um, similar to Michael Jackson in sort of style of singing of like the sort of the high pitch and sort of making noises and doing stuff there but again love the others uh, a lot that sort of doesn't really happen from there but I did quite like the beats that happened towards this one um, I think it was about halfway through onwards nothing special to say about this one okay Okay, so the next song was Spaceship uh, Coupe. So with this one, it was uh, you know really slowing the tempo down, and I really struggled to enjoy this one. It's a low tempo, chill song, but it's just not for me. Was there a saxophone? I think I heard as well being played. The song, you know, was easing out towards the end but it was just dragging on for too long for me. Just didn't, didn't like this, the feel of this song. Yeah, this is really frustrating because I quite like, you know, the change up and we've got a different style vibe sort of going on. The trouble is the previous tracks weren't exactly fast, upbeat songs. They're already slow tempo and this slows it down more. And again, because it's a long song, it just felt like it was dragging on again. So it's a nice slow ballad, which I know Justin Timberlake's done in the past. It still has the Justin Timberlake. Um, to it. And again, there were probably little elements that I would like and probably quite good. Again, like the guitar bit in the middle to change things up a little bit. But as you still said there, just at a certain point, just felt like it was dragging and she never have to sort of feel like that. So at this point, I was really thinking about, you know, to never want to think about it, like skipping a song. Like so it tends to go, just want to skip stuff. I knew it wouldn't because I knew the stuff I miss and it's obviously didn't because that's not the point of it, but that's generally how I felt. Uh, but I was at that point where I was like, right, I'm coming away from it. I might have to listen to the second half at uh, another stage, which is what I did. So this was like the final score for you? So. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Because I, I, I knew it was going to be, I thought, okay, let me get to here and then let me move it on. Because I didn't really <laughs> want to try and break it up. But yeah, that, as you said, was sort of the final show where, okay, I think I do need to step away. Okay, next up then we have That Girl. Don't have much to say about this one. It was slow and groovy. Um, I don't know, the word kind of groovy kind of fits quite well for some of these songs. Again, feels chilled. And again, that word chilled. I think he's, he's very much trying to kind of to me, come across as that kind of cool and chilled kind of, you know, adjusted to, but I don't know that kind of feel. And yeah, and JT is as smooth as ever, but I just don't really like it. I don't know why, just, just don't really like the song. Uh, yeah, I, I tell you what you're saying. Um, I do, I, I probably, I mean, like I say it was all debatable. I do think he probably is, and I do think that is probably, if I say it has to be, so you've got to be in the right, frame of mind to probably enjoy it in a in a cool way so i made reference about you know being i've always said like in a bar stuff i think this has to be like a a bar where you could be standing by the bar with a mm -hmm. drink and just almost people watching and just thinking about it but that, that aside um so yeah, another so song this is one of the shorter ones at four minutes <laughs> not that i'm obsessed with the length of times of, of songs at all there again there were probably elements that i did like Kind of, but again, they're not enough to sort of make it stand out or think, oh, I really want to sort of like it. 
it was just a nice song uh, for the album. But again, maybe because again, I've stepped away, I've come back in with fresh and maybe lower my expectations to suddenly looking and hearing about the songs maybe um, a bit differently. So I actually didn't find this one that bad, actually. And at least it was a bit different to what we've been doing um, already. Yeah. So next one was Let the Groove Get In. So you, you talked a, th- a number earlier in the album about repetitiveness. Well, this is uh, <laughs> the king of repetitiveness, this one. So a very repetitive start. You know, let the groove go, let the groove get in. Are you comfortable? It was repeated about a thousand times in this song. Uh, it felt like it. And it was really getting on my nerves. Um, I don't actually didn't mind the sort of what I've described as kind of a samba sounding beat. Um, but it was just too long and too repetitive. Just didn't like this song. Uh, yeah, and, and this is where I mean when the album, I think it has so much to lie. So this song was actually, I think, taking all negative away, quite a good song. From my head was bopping, toe was tapping, um, the usual sort of stuff there. <laughs> Just a tad bit repetitive. You definitely wouldn't want to have this as like as a drinking game or something where you had to drink every time you hear the word groove or anything like that um and i said there like for the last two or three minutes there's just nothing that's going on like it song sort of just probably finished there and it probably been all right it just i said took things a bit too far even though again again the ending was different and it felt like it was a, a totally different song but for me personally just make that different song make that different song and just because i said there was potential with um this sort of groove song because i said it was almost quite catchy quite i said beatish in a way um, but I said maybe I've already written off because of the length of it um, so it's a shame so next up we had mirrors so I like the instrumental start then as it after the kind of intro instrumental intro the, the, the song actually properly started I was like oh yeah I remember this song very well now and I thought this is a fairly decent song nice to hear it again after such a long time um, and as the song was going on, I was like, hmm, well, I'm intrigued to know what this long version is going to be like, the album version. And so far, after a good few minutes, I was like, well, this is just like the normal radio edit so far. So like, what's going to happen as it goes on? Um, and then we sort of had this kind of like orchestra-like part after about five minutes. I was like, okay, now this is different. Definitely not on the radio edit. Um, and it feels quite different to the main part of the song. Um, and I actually think this spoiled a really good song because uh, it, it, it just got boring. Nothing happened towards the end. It just petered out. And I, I was hoping what was going to happen was, because this song actually did have a chorus, I was hoping the chorus would come on one last time at the end just to finish things off, but it didn't. It just petered out. And so I was, I, I've actually, actually, if we forget about that last bit, the, the, the last few minutes of the song. I actually really like this song, probably more than what I did at the time when it came out all those years ago. So it's actually grown on me quite a bit. I've listened to it a few times. And I, I, this is the song I'm going to put onto my running. I only have a, a playlist for running when I go running. And I think it's not the most upbeat of songs in the world, but I think it's going to go quite well for me when I'm running. So I definitely want this, the radio edit, though, not, not the full album version, because like I said, I was disappointed with the, the last few minutes. I just thought it was just uncool, unnecessary. So good song, ending was was poor. Um, yeah, so this for me was also stand. So I can see why this song probably got released. Um, like you as well, I actually think I preferred it hearing it back again because again, that song I hadn't heard for ages. I felt for some reason the album, well, the album version I was listening to felt faster than the from what I remember of the original, it probably were the same, uh, but it just, it, it felt like that. But then, like you said, that's all, that midway point or towards the end, it will change, it does all slow it down. And again, it just didn't need it. It just it kind of, I'm not going to say ruined the song, but I said it just didn't need, like I said with the previous song, just cut it off, but I would make it a separate song and just do it, do it as a special song, basically. Um, so you know how I always say about head bopping and um, toes tapping. So I've added a new one after listening to the song. I've got here sort of hands clapping or clicking. So I felt my hands all clapping on this one. Again, it was actually, you know, it's a really catchy, yeah. 
catching um, from there. For me, it was the saving grace of the album, Burstead, live with the rest of the songs, the, the, the additional length of it, I just said that, and I didn't want to say ruined it, but effectively it, it did a little bit from there. So again, if I was in a place like you, I'd probably try and find the radio edits um, and put it on there. But uh, yeah, really, really good song and better than what I sort of remember it before. So the last song was Blue Ocean Floor. Very, very slow so far. And I was like, this is awful. This, this, this could be good to send, to send me to sleep. Getting a little bit better after five minutes, but it's, this is a bit different now. But then it just went back to being boring and slow and repetitive again. I like the fact, well, I like the fact that the song is a slow song. I think it's a good, we said this before, it's a good way to end the album generally albums but not this type of slow song it's just it was just drab and boring and i just didn't didn't get on with it didn't get what he was trying to do um yeah i agree with what you said there um so i actually like this as the last song on the album so that, that sort of nice slow one but again because of its length and again not a lot kind of happens it sort of just drags on after all the rest of them being so, so long. Having some others, I see the potential is actually quite liked it in parts. But I said, again, where it was just still in my head, just, uh, it was just that little bit sort of um, too long um, from it there. But um, at least there was something a bit different now. But I said, the trouble is, the faster tempo songs were not that fast. And suddenly, you've, like we have with the um, Spaceship Coop one, slow but felt really slow and drab and this was kind of um, the same I think or any other album any other way it'd probably be a really good end album but because everything's been so drab and so long already this is just yeah put you to sleep um, so potential but kind of ruined it because for me personally the, the length and not much else going on okay well that concludes our album review we're going to we're going to just sum up We'll try to be quick. We actually only have three minutes, 45 seconds left on this um, Zoom call. So for me, ooh, yeah, for me, I was disappointed with it. Um, songs were too long, as you said. Um, and I just felt uh, the songs were lacking the chorus for me. Um, so of course, it's something that, that I find quite important in terms of me liking a song. But there was that one positive, Mirrors, which I said I thought was a, a really good song, um, apart from the, the last few minutes of it, which I, did, which I thought were uncalled for. So I have taken some, yeah, well, something from the song, from the album, that I will put onto my playlist. So I'm happy about, about that. Um, but for me, yeah, it just, just didn't work for me. Um, Songs were too long, um, and even if, even if they weren't that, as, even if they hadn't been as long as that, I still don't think I would have liked, liked it to be honest. But it would have been better for sure. They'd been shorter. Um, Brett, what about you? Yeah, I'll try and say not too much. Um, I feel like I've said enough of my points sort of throughout the sort of album review. He <laughs> said the key thing for me. I said that the songs just felt that little bit um, too long. A lot of potential. I did like elements of the songs, but for a lot of them, they just went on too long. Um, so I know it says 20 out of 20 experience. I'll probably give it five out of 20 um, experience. But like you, we'll be taking mirrors onto a place, but it won't be the album version. So it kind of almost is that object um, as well. So yeah, that's what I'll say in that before we get cut off. Okay. So... Thank you for the album request. It's been a, it feels like it's been a long time since I've actually liked an album, like a really liked one, you know. Um, so so fussy. <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks for that. And we will see you again soon for the next one. Apologies for the connection issues one. as well that we've been uh, having today. Hopefully it hasn't uh, been too bad for you. And yeah, that's it from us. See you. Goodbye.